must unite what has been set aside. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. They should know that one word of God is all and all are one. If the Bible is false in one, it is false in all. If the Copernican system is correct, then Genesis is a myth. Is scripture, which has enlightened the world for thousands of years, now to be eclipsed by a science which has erred so often and is altogether fallacious in so many things? Much indeed is at stake. Satan is bold. Let us be true philosophers and not blindly follow the teachings of either old or modern astronomers and their many wild assumptions, but let us ever follow the truth. If the above reasons enable even a single soul to throw off the shackles of mere superstitious reverence for the Copernican dogma and of blind subservience to a scientific priestcraft which abuses its authority, most shamefully, the consequence for good may be incalculable. F.E. Pache, reason number 49, 50 reasons, Copernicus or the Bible. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, San Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed here on Truth Frequency Radio. And I do ask all of you to pray for Kathy. She's not been feeling well uh, the past couple days. I think she's just overworked with all that she's doing and so she's taking a rest this evening uh, but i have as special guest robbie davidson celebrate truth on youtube who's also a videographer filmmaker and uh as hosting and putting on the flat earth conference this upcoming november 8th through the 10th um and is hosting with brian mullins and so robbie are you there brother here's in. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's a great honor and a great pleasure. And it was uh, also a true blessing to be able to meet you just recently. But before we go there, I would like you to give out your contact information, your where people can go to listen and find your work. And also, if you would talk just a little bit about the upcoming conference. And uh, of course, we'll go into it more later. Sure. Yeah. My uh, YouTube channel is Celebrate Truth, just the two words, Celebrate Truth. And you can find pretty much all the content that I put out over the last two years. And uh, you can go to CelebrateTruth.org is the official website uh, where you can learn more and uh, find out about uh, my DVDs, uh, specifically Scientism Exposed, which the sequel is coming out soon. And we'll definitely be talking more about that because uh, meeting up with you, uh, you provided some amazing interview footage and some great insight uh, in making it what it is. So I'm excited to release that coming up here in November. And on the, on the uh, conference, uh, it is November 9th and 10th. So next month, it's about 27 days away. I'm watching the counter uh, kick down. It's really becoming real now, but it's, it's absolutely going to be phenomenal. It's going to be uh, well over 500 people. Uh, there's media coming in from Australia. You got the Sydney Herald coming in, the, the New Yorkers coming in. We've got a crew from Germany, uh, Dubai, pretty much very international, I guess, living up to the name Flat Earth International Conference. So being able to put that on. And um, unfortunately, Brian Mullen will not be a part of it. If uh, anyone you had mentioned that uh, we were both uh, on, okay. but Brian has kind of backed out, and a lot of people have asked, you know, but what happened, you know, with Brian Mullen? And really, it's uh, just personal. It really wasn't flat earth related or anything. It's just uh, personal reasons. He had to take a step back, but uh, keep praying for him and his family. But uh, the show will go on, and uh, we're looking to do something really amazing and make history in NC in uh, November. Uh, I, I absolutely believe that this is going to certainly um, be a catalyst for a great awakening with regard to many different issues, um, scientism, um, the cosmology, geocentricity, the Bible, uh, so much. Um, and I know that a lot of people are excited and like you are counting down uh, the days because it's coming up quickly and I know that you are busy uh, working on 
scientism exposed and yes we did recently get a chance to to meet and so uh, let's talk a, a little bit about that um, I know that you've been traveling um, probably the world if not just the United States and other parts and meeting others and gathering film and um, so if you would can you talk a little bit about your experiences with putting forth uh, and gathering the material for this new documentary, some of the people that are on, and um, as far as the contents and anything that you can share. Sure, yeah. I mean, when it came to Scientism Exposed 2, I wanted to kind of get out there and meet up with people and, you know, ask these hard questions and get into other areas of science. So I was very privileged to be able to meet up with Dr. Aaron Judkins uh, on YouTube. He goes by Forbidden uh, Paleontology. <clears throat> Anyways, he's done a lot of un undercover things, archaeology. He was on Mount Ararat looking for Noah's Ark. He's done uh, excavations all over. Specifically, though, in um, you know when it came into Texas, that's where this kind of you know activity was happening. So I headed down to Texas, and that was kind of my first leg of the trip for filming for Scientism Exposed too. So um, I was able to kind of meet up with Dr. Aaron Jenkins, going through that, and you're going to see a lot of incredible stuff that he's brought forward. Definitely getting into the lies when it comes into evolution, when it comes to the idea that dinosaurs are a lot younger than what we're being taught, the cover-ups that are going on. So I really focused on the first part of Scientism Exposed to really dealing with, uh, you know, biological, getting into these type of sciences where it transforms more into the cosmology, you know, later on in the film. But it was really amazing to be able to sit down and, you know, talk with him and get to meet him. And then also Joe Taylor that goes, uh, you know, that's done incredible work, definitely uh, covering a lot of the lies when it comes to, you know, the flood, when it comes to the fact that uh, we're going from, you know, basic to complex where, you know, things in the past, you know, were very, very complex. But one of the big interesting things was the hiding of giants, that all of the different right. signs that they're finding. And again, this is what validates the Bible. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone's familiar with the story, you know, David and Goliath. And I mean, the Bible's very clear. I mean, it's as literal as it can be. There were giants. So, I mean, from a biblical point of view, you have to look at the fact that, yeah, we would see, you know, some, you know, evidence of this at some point. And sure enough, you know, it's been, you know, there's been uh, evidence all over the earth. And again, he's done some extensive research on there. He's brought some great, great insight. Uh, he's actually going to be at the conference. Now, he's not fully 100 percent, you know, on board with um, enclosed cosmology, but he's very intrigued. He's very open. He's coming to learn. He's going to definitely talk. So, again, I wanted people that were part of the project that maybe not necessarily uh, agreed 100 percent with one another, but they were all kind of united in the fact that, listen, there's some major lies with mm -hmm. you know, scientism. So it was really incredible. I was able to sit down with Rob Skiba. Uh, and Rick Hummer, as well, as well as John Gabrielson, that was uh, uh, doing the conference in uh, Texas that I was invited to speak at. So getting them and getting all the different takes, it was really amazing. But then going into the second leg of the journey, I was going to be traveling. I was doing some filming uh, in New Jersey. I was heading into Atlanta. And from Atlanta, I was going over to Alabama because the plan was that I was going to be meeting up with Pastor Dean Odell. Pastor Dean Odell has been very outspoken lately, uh, you know, with his church, you know, the whole church talking talking about flat earth and enclosed cosmology and he's brought a lot of great insights so and we've got to know each other you know over the last year or so so i definitely wanted to meet up with him well when i landed in atlanta because the plan was we were going to rent a vehicle we were actually flying back out from atlanta back to canada so i said well let, let, let's maybe get a hotel there or we'll head to alabama i wasn't sure so when we landed i just kind of threw out a thing and i said hey does anyone you know anyone want to meet up any flat earthers around and I didn't really hear anything. We started heading towards Alabama. Now, we got into Alabama, and all of a sudden, I looked at uh, my Facebook, and someone said, Zen Garcia, <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, I've got that, you know, the, the debate. And, and maybe he's by Atlanta. I wasn't 100% I wasn't sure. You and I have talked before, but mm -hmm, I wasn't quite right. sure exactly where you live. So <clears throat> called you up, and uh, we kind of Google mapped it real quick, and we're like, we're about two and a half hours away. So I, I looked at my cameraman. I said, you want to do it? It was about, I think, three, four in the afternoon when we arrived in Alabama in the hotel. And we weren't doing anything that night. We were going to wake up in the morning and, do, and shoot and meet up with Dean uh, at his church. So we're like, hey, we're just kicking it back th tonight. Let's do it. So we jumped in the car. We traveled like almost three hours because we got kind of, 
misdirected in Atlanta a couple of times with our GPS. So we ended up getting, I think at your place, uh, what time did we arrive at? Around 10? Yeah, I think it was right around 10. Yeah, it was around around 10 o'clock. But it was awesome to to meet with you. And then we got you down. And to me, it was just, it was so, it was so organized in the sense that uh, we were, we were praying and we wanted for sure myself to have the right people on this project. And it was beautiful just how God just brought it all together, especially with just, you know, the, the odds of being able to be that close, you get, getting a hold of you that quick and that you were free and we were able to meet up. So it was, it was a real right. honor and pleasure to finally meet up with you. We've been on, we've done shows and we've talked before, but it was awesome to get you on camera and really talk about a lot of these deceptions, not just with cosmology, but getting into evolution, but going further and figuring it out. Well, where is this heading? You know, what, what is the direction? direction why why are they leading us what's the spiritual agenda behind it all and i right. think that you really elegantly you know put it down and like i said i think people are going to be really impressed uh because we're pretty much in the final stages just going into mastering and uh, i think that uh, people are going to be really intrigued with how it's all mapped together and the uh, great insight that you you brought to the film well i really appreciate that and you know i do give all glory uh, to the most high for you know bringing it and all together and allowing it to be ordained in that way and giving me the opportunity to be part of the program and for those that have not seen um, or reviewed scientism exposed the first you can find it on Robbie's YouTube channel and it is a, a deeply profound and very well done uh, documentary and uh, I know the people that I have shown it to that are not even familiar with this topic or uh, anything with regard to, you know, the um, uh, questioning what we have been told and indoctrinated into all of our lives, that it was um, very interesting and something that intrigued them to do further research. And so I think you um, succeeded in that manner. And uh, so can you talk about, because there's a question from Progressive in the chat room with regard to uh, just scientism and question marks. So can you explain a, a little bit about scientism and how you approached it in the first documentary? And if you would, um, a little bit about how you and what you're going into with the second Sure. Yeah. And the idea behind Scientism Exposed was to really show the difference between the two, science and scientism. Uh, I went on the record saying that, you know, I have no uh, problems with science. I mean, I love science. True science is wonderful. There's nothing wrong with it. But what the problem is, is much of what is being taught, especially when it comes to the origins, when it comes to a lot of the different sciences, it's moved into scientism, where it's become a religion, it's become, you know, a belief system. And if you even try to even bring evidence, you know, true scientists are scared to death to bring out evidence that they're finding, because they're going to get fired. There is something really right. sinister going on with this. So I, I opened the film, Scientism Exposed, showing you know, and and telling the difference between this is what science is, and here's what scientism is. And scientism, like I said, is nothing close to science. So what I propose to people is say, listen, if most of what you believed in your life, if you found out that most of what you believed was the truth because it was science, if it was scientism, would you th rethink things? And I think that's what happened. And my goal for Scientism Exposed was to really gently just approach the topic where if there was one thing that got people thinking, going, huh, that's interesting. I want to look into that more. It was really meant as a catalyst to get them to start doing their own digging, to do their own investigation, to go further. It was a real introductory piece that I wanted to be very subtle in the sense, but I wanted to show that definitely this is going on. They're admitting it. They're, they're telling you. Um, and again, a lot of the stuff where people think, well, no, it's rock solid. I mean, evolution's been proven. It's 100%, you know, correct, and it's not. You know, it's a theory, just like the, the theory of gra you know, theory of relativity or the theory of evolution. These are theories. This is like a consensus, and this consensus has formed, especially when you get into, you know, the biological sciences. When you get into like Darwinism, and if you even try to rock that, you know, it's like the big boys group. I mean, you're going to be you're going to be ostracized. You're going to lose your funding. You're going to lose your job, or even worse. So the thing is, it's moved in now at true science. They have no place for true science. But again, this was always the plan. The plan was to hijack something that basically everyone knew was the truth. It was reality. You do it. You do something that's empirical. You know, you test it, you observe it, you repeat it. This is what science is. And science is wonderful. But that is not what's going on anymore. Now it's theoretical sciences. Now it's just 
you know, proselytizing it, different different things, you know, when it comes to the universe. I mean, they propose different things about, you know, uh, gravity waves they see, you know, 18 <laughs> billion light years away. I mean, what kind of lens sees that distance? I mean, right. when you hear when you hear the talk of people talking about one light year, understand they talk, you know, say 14 light years away or whatever. One light year is seven trillion miles. That's trillion. You know, that is an insane amount. Now, ask yourself the question, what kind of lens can see that far? And not only that, they're saying they're seeing in the past. So mm-hmm. when you start digging, and that's what Scientism Exposed did, they started showing them in their own words. It started showing how, again, there's a lot of things that, sure, it's a belief. If you want to believe it, go ahead. But it's not science. It's scientism. Right. Absolutely. And also, we likewise support real science as well, which is why we put that whole reward as far as the flat earth challenge out there. And if people don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to sacredwordpublishing.net and click on the flat earth challenge. And basically we just asked uh, anybody that can prove either that uh, through two verifiable and that can be repeated scientific experiments that either there is true measurable curvature according to the scientific uh, formula for determining and measuring that curvature, or that the Earth is moving in excess of 100 miles an hour, that we will gladly reward somebody uh, that can verify that, um, you know, as far as the real science. If you can confirm that, you can win the money, Uh, which, in my opinion, in having examined and studied, looked into some of what Robbie is bringing forth and talked about in his work, uh, in my opinion, and the reason I became uh, a a non-believer with regard to the indoctrination of the the globe model and the Copernican system is that I'm not able to find curvature or or measure it. And and it's very um, plain that anybody across the world can go and look and see things beyond what is said to be possible according to curvature that we're seeing islands um monuments the statue of liberty skylines uh, lighthouses things of that nature out beyond what should be possible according to curvature and so uh, and then the other thing is that the earth is in no way moving at 1037 miles an hour faster than the speed of sound or bullet shot from a 45 caliber or 22 caliber gun. Robbie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's and that's the reality of it is a lot of this stuff, you know, cannot be verified. You can't run it through the scientific method. Uh, right. And that's, you know, real empirical science. And that's what true science is. And, you know, a lot of people are going out and they're doing they're becoming scientists themselves. They're going out, they're doing the experiments and the results are just not turning up the way, you know, it should. So, uh, you know, you hit it for sure when you, you talked about, you know, there is nothing, there is no scientific experiment to prove the curvature or the movement of the earth. I mean, we are still, we are not moving. I mean, it seems crazy to a lot of people because, you know, we've seen all those pictures and we, you know, seen all these things. But really, when you start to think about it, if you want to say, hey, this is science, you can believe that you're flying around the the universe all you want, but don't say it's scientific. Right. Yeah, because it's not verifiable. It's not repeatable. You cannot confirm it through the scientific method. It's all, as you said, theoretical. It's all postulations and cannot be verified in any manner. So no matter what you think about the shape of the Earth and whether we are living in an enclosed system, most certainly we are not spinning once daily as we annually orbit around the sun. That whole model, the Copernican model and uh, the heliocentric system, all of that can be thrown out the window and um, something has to, you know, as far as truth, has to replace it and we are you know having to determine and examine uh what that may be yeah i mean for so many people like i said it's uh tough to come to the topic at first but uh you know you have to look at it with an open mind to start looking into it don't just shrug it off or brush it off i mean you have to just really start digging and ask these hard questions because i mean this is what a lot of us are doing Uh, Even outside of the biblical model, I mean, there are people that really haven't even come to that understanding yet. They've come to the understanding that, yeah, we are created because they realize the lies 
are being taught that we're just an accident. We're just a random accident, you know, from a big right. bang that, you know, exploded from nothing. Uh, and this is the, what scientism exposed really runs through. And I think it wakes up a lot of people to the fact that, well, wait a minute, you know, I've been believing this, but it's not really scientific, you know? So wait a minute, maybe there is something going on because why wouldn't they want true investigation? Why wouldn't they want the evidence if it's supported either way? Uh, they would just want the truth, but they don't want the truth. They want to cover up. They want to hide things. They want to keep with their paradigm. They want to keep with their agenda because, again, it's not just men trying to suppress things. It's a spirit behind those men. And again, there's something a lot sinister and darker going on behind the scenes. And we're told very, very, very plainly, uh, you know, in the Bible that the God of this world, you know, is running things and you know the world's ways are not you know uh what the what god you know has in mind and and that's really what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with with uh, a power that is basically an operation to basically take people away from the idea that they're created that they are special the whole notion that we basically people would rather believe they came from nothing rather than a loving creator you know this is the levels of where we're going in society and scientism has been the one brilliant move i believe that satan has used because he didn't masquerade it as another religion another belief system maybe even just opposing god he basically masqueraded it under science and it was so hard for people to understand the fact that really what happened was it became a religion he could push his agenda and no one would even blink twice because again this is science. We don't question science. Science is reality, right? We're here because of science and all this. So again, it's like a Trojan horse that moved in. And what scientism is doing now, it's validating everything. So everything that's being tried to be destroyed, whether it's the morality, whether it's the gender, whether it's the way things were created in the created order, when we're getting into creation, everything is now getting distorted from the creation to the creations. And this is scientism that's validating it and making it move a lot further along uh, and a lot faster on the timeline because people are not questioning it and thinking twice because, again, the scientists said so. Well, there was a point where science was con confirmation of what was observable and that the there was integrity and in the scientists that were searching and gathering knowledge and sharing it with the world, it was based upon what was true. And so when science, um, it, it, it gained a reputation for being um, an authority on truth, then that's when it was ripe to be uh, swayed and taken over and controlled from the top down as Satan so often does. And then the, the leaven was inserted and that's when scientific science really became scientism and um in my opinion it all you know ties back to the whole isaiah 14 where where lucifer satan said uh, i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high that part of subjecting and counterfeiting the cosmology and other aspects of truth and knowledge was in order to do this do this in being like the most high that he as the masonic sun god most certainly has now uh, settled the sun as the preeminent body within the the cosmology and the earth which you know we know that everything has been made and that the luminaries move in circuit above the earth and that it is the focus of the creation but it has now been subjugated and made just a servant of the solar system and one of the planetary subjects of the sun god uh helios and um and so that's part of this whole masonic counterfeit uh, theology and religion which has been now put into place and that there's as you said a more sinister agenda because it's leading to what we talked about in the the new, um, the second part of scientism exposed the strong delusion in the next aspect of the agenda, which in my opinion is tied to the whole ancient alien phenomena going on right now and the assertion that the fallen angels, the ancient aliens, the extraterrestrials are our creators and that they're coming back to save us from ourselves. Um, can you comment in on that? And then I'd like to uh, ask you about the last part of the 
first scientism exposed because the way that you ended it was perfect and uh and I, I'd like to mention that as well. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it really goes down to you know getting into all these things with the scientism exposed. It was set up in in such a way to really provoke these uh, these questions and get people thinking about you know what what is really going on. And there is something sinister. And you brought up the whole alien you know deception. And I mean, I've been following that for a long time, years and years mm -hmm. and years. But really, how you really know exactly this is the way it's going is because, again, scientism comes in and validates it. I mean, it might be something, it might be far-fetched, you might have a theory on your hands, but when you start seeing science come in and saying, yeah, absolutely, you know, you've got, I mean, I have right. a clip, you know, of uh, Bill Nye saying that it's more feasible that we came from Martians than Adam and Eve. So, again, this is the, the whole idea is that they are pushing this. Yeah, Dawkins talked about the fact that, you know, somewhere in the universe there's a more evolved species that probably seeded us and they've been watching right. us. And so, again, you have scientism validating it. I see scientism validating everything, whether it's the transgendered, uh, you know, with, with the whole LGBT agenda. Now science is moving in and saying, yeah, yeah, that's right. We just did a test and scientifically it's proven, you know. And it's like they don't show you any evidence. They don't show you the fact that, you know, all the scientists will come forward and say, you know, when it comes to genders, you either XX or XY, but they'll say, nope, we're many genders now. You know, could we right. tested it with science, but they never show the evidence. So what I'm saying is scientism moves in with everything. And Hold yes, on, Robbie. Genders... Sorry. We're at, we're at break. Oh, okay. We'll be right back, everyone. All right. Welcome back, everybody. I um, want to give you a chance to finish your thought, and then uh, I'll ask you that next question that I was wanting to bring up. Sure. Yeah. And I was just kind of concluding by saying that, yeah, you have scientism validating this and what greater way to get the world to wage war uh, against uh, God is basically convince them that there's an outside threat coming. Uh, you have multiple sources of people talking about how it would be a perfect way to band the world together in unity. Uh, and I think this is going to be one of the big deceptions in more of a technological scientific worldview. Uh, and in order to basically pull that off, you need a big bang heliocentric type paradigm in order to actually, even, you know, have that idea set in people's minds that there, you know, there's millions of life forms out there. We're, we're indoctrinated so much with the media uh, and you get into sci fi. And I think people are just being completely prepped for uh, the, the, uh, the, the grand deception that's going to come. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in my opinion, that is tied into the biblical warning on the strong deception for those that love not the truth and that could uh, deceive even the very elect if it were possible. Uh, and that, again, that's tied into Satan being like the Most High and establishing him self um you know as the masonic sun god and then the whole thing with regard to the a uh, alien antichrist um and his coming uh, upon the world stage that all these things in my opinion are are dependent upon and based upon the scientism as far as the darwin and heliocentric worldview and the foundation that all of that established for you know that we evolved the monkeys and now the missing link is because uh, the ancient aliens came here and seated us and left uh, so long ago, but are returning again later. Uh, and that all of that, as you said, the scientists themselves and even the Vatican, you know, they've set up this whole uh, this whole department to welcome uh, the returning gods and and all of that has been put forth in the movies and Hollywood, the ancient aliens series. Uh, it's the most popular show worldwide, it seems. And, uh, and, and it most certainly and it is espousing exactly what you and I uh, have been warning about for, for years now. Yeah. And in order to have, you know, ancient aliens, in order to have aliens at all, you need, you know, a big bang evolutionary paradigm. Uh, the fact that there'd be, you know, species in the universe that would be high, highly evolved, more evolved than us. Some would be less evolved. The likelihood based on probably, you know, but getting into the math. So, again, they have this all figured out. Satan is basically, you know, as a Trojan horse moved in with scientism and, you know, is just validating all these things. The agenda is being completely set. And scientism is one of the strongest ways to secure that, you know, in cement where people will not actually question it because it's not a opposing belief. It's not even a differing belief. It's science. It's truth. It's fact. There is no debate. That's what they tell us. 
But we're finding that in a lot of the things, definitely as they push the scientism, there is a debate and they don't want to have it because they know they have nothing to stand on. Right. Absolutely. Um, in your first documentary, which I thought it was you know, most excellent, all, the entire thing, but specifically the way that you ended it, um, and I, I believe it was you had your wife uh, reading this narrative mm -hmm. about um, Christ and the hope and how this all also ties into um, the scientism and the fakery, the counterfeit system and how you you know basically brought hope back into all of it because so many people believing the the deception and those that are coming out of scientism that believe we evolved in monkeys or that the extraterrestrials seeded us they don't know or understand uh, the promise the the blessed hope of of christ and his return and the whole message in his mission and dying to extend uh, forgiveness of sins and giving us chance for salvation and eternity with them. And the way that you um, ended it was most certainly superb. But can you can you speak just a little bit about that, if you can remember anything with regard to um, the specifics? Because she just laid it out beautifully, and it was it was touching. Um, uh, deeply endearing. Well, yeah, no, and it was, uh, you know, put together, uh, you know, based on on making sure that uh, at the end, you know, there was hope and that really when it comes to this investigation, whether you're exposing any of the world's lies, uh, when people wake up to the reality that they have indeed been lied to their entire life, they've, they've rested on something, they've laid their hope in something that they believe was truth and reality. And again, for a person to lose their entire worldview, you know, is very scary. Mm -hmm. But when they at least come out of that, they need to find out because they need to know, you know, if they're saying, okay, wow, you know, I was lied to. There is a creator. They tried to hide God. Well, who is God? Who is, yes. you know, and the reality of how much he cares, the the plan, the, the integral design, like everything of worth and value comes back. But it is important to direct to the, the true creator of creation. And the Bible is very clear that it's Jesus. Amen. I mean, it clearly says that in the beginning, right? And again, that's the intriguing part of this whole mystery when it comes to, wow, there's a creator and there's so many people waking up to this knowledge, but you know, they'll look at Jesus and they'll say, oh, this or that. And I just implore people, you know, really look into it because it's so strange, you know, like no one debates whether Julius Caesar existed, but everyone's like, well, Jesus, maybe he didn't exist. You know, he's always the one that people point. No one goes around and says that Buddha might, might have not existed. Right. But they'll mm -hmm. say that about Jesus. When it comes to the Bible, they'll say the same type of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. It's corrupt. It's this, that, but no one's says the other literature other other books in in history n nothing gets an attack like the bible it's been the most hated book yet it's the best seller in the world sort of thing right, right so there's right. something intriguing about it it truly is god's word it's living sharper than a two-edged sword this is the reality but again it's important in the gospel the good news is there is good news as wicked and as awful as this earth is and this system you know, we're, we're, we're visiting, we're here, we're here. God has a plan for each one of us. And it's important that people, you know, realize that. But again, this is a limited, it's like I explain to people all the time, think of all the pain and suffering that you've experienced in your entire life. In, in when you take eternity forever, it's like a bee sting. Everything that you've endured in your 80, 90, 100 years living on earth, it will be like a bee sting compared to eternity, right? So when right. you look back on it, it really won't be that bad. But again, the hope that lies is very important when it comes down to uh, the reality. So again, I did the same thing with Scientism Exposed too. while we're going to some deep, dark, you know, hideous type things and seeing how dark this agenda gets. There is a very incredible, powerful ending, uh, you know, that that happens at the end. And, and I'm really happy with it. I really think that it's going to move a lot of people. And again, it really comes down to the gospel. There is good news in this. Mm -hmm. And again, it's freely offered. It's a free gift. No one's going to force you. No one's going to tell you, you know, what to do. This is between you and your maker. Right. And it's right. important to spend the time and really look into it. If you have been lied to by your teachers, by the system, by the media, by the news, understand that it's not like these guys are all in on lying on you. There's someone, there's a spirit that works behind them. And if they're so insistent to keep you away from the truth, when you realize the true creator, the truth of the Bible, your whole world is going to change and you will be changed for eternity.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the other amazing thing with regard to this whole knowledge in this particular paradigm is that this particular truth, it also confirms the Bible as the inspired word of God. And that once you understand that the cosmology that is revealed therein, and that also that we were made in the image of God, that the earth was created specially for us as place of habitation, and that there's nothing else like it in the entire universe, then things, your perspective on where you are and who you are, deeply change and your relationship to the creator and the creation also change and then when you understand those profound truths are encoded in the bible when you begin to study it and especially for those that being anti-god and anti-christianity anti-bible all of their lives that did not believe or buy into that think religions were all you know, contrived in order to control and to establish uh, a matrix for such control, that when they come to the realization that uh, the word truly is inspired, and it had to have been inspired by the creator who describes how he created and aligned and uh, set up and established the the creation and that knowing that that is truth and then you begin to study the other aspects of it uh the fall of humanity and why it was that christ had to come into the flesh in order to redeem us and then defeating death uh proves that he is the author and the holder of the keys of life and death and that salvation comes through him these are other deeply profound truths that can you know, as they have for you, myself, and others, uh, that truth has changed our lives and has made us want to live differently, to relate with the world and everybody that we come across in our daily lives differently, that we are aspiring to following the example of our King and Lord and to love even those that hate us and our enemies. I mean, the gospel and the message of it based upon love and the love of, of others and the love of our creator, that it's, it's such a deeply profound and such a beautiful message. And if everybody just embraced the Ten Commandments and the whole uh, basis of loving each other and one another and caring for and uh, being compassionate with one another, even this world, even though this is uh, based on the duality of good and evil, light and darkness, and the the merger of both here upon this plane, the you know heaven and hell joining together in this reality, even here, this could be such a beautiful place, and it has the capacity, as we all know, the that you know there's a capacity for such beauty and such love and such caring and compassion um that you know this is reflected in my opinion in the scriptures and what we are um led and shown in the example of the apostles and christ and um the even the church and in when it works in the way that it really should um but can you um also speak about just a little bit about what it was that brought you to truth as far as the understanding of uh, the gospel as you inspired the word of God and how it changed you. Are you talking about like how I got like saved like back in the day? Yeah. Uh, just, you know, what brought you, because, you know, those that truly are saved, our lives are completely different. I know myself that I was running rampant and living completely in the world and just, you know, being sinful um, and uh, in, without even realizing, just doing as thou wilt, which, you know, is the whole law of the Satanism and the whole satanic thing, but just yeah. being in the world. Yeah, if you would, just. Yeah, I, I was I was one of those guys, uh, you know, growing up. I mean, I my life changed 
uh, at the age of 21. But prior to that, you know, I was one of those type of people that I was the last person on earth that you would ever expect to be one of those Bible thumpers, you know, mm-hmm, or even right. a guy that would set foot in a church. So again, my life was absolutely radically, uh, completely changed. And I really, like I said, it wasn't even my doing. Um, it was something that was completely ordained to happen. And really it was kind of in a way that, uh, you know, God wasn't going to let me go away. So really, uh, you know, it's a long story, but I can sum it up. Uh, there yeah. was a, mm-hmm. a friend when I was uh, about 20 years old, I got to know and stuff and he just kind of seemed a little bit different, but he was cool. We were hanging out and stuff and I'd be in the clubs, you know, drinking and stuff. And, um, mm-hmm. and then we'd go out and chat afterwards and stuff. So I'd be like, come on in, you know, no, it's okay. I'll just wait outside. <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> and I would go out of the bar. I'd jump in the car and we'd go around and we just got along really good. We just clicked, right? It was just one of those things. Like he became my best friend and stuff. And, you know, he wasn't like preachy or anything. I really didn't know anything until probably about three, four months, you know, really when we really started hanging out a lot. And then one night we were sitting talking. He's like, ah, oh, it's pretty late. He's like, I, I got to go because I got to get to church tomorrow. And I'm like, you go to church? I go, your parents make you go to church? <laughs> He's like, no. He's like, I want to go to church. I'm like, What? <laughs> Like, I thought for sure, like his parents, you know, because he lived with his parents. So I thought for sure it's his parents dragging him to church, right? He's Uh like, no, I want to go. I'm like, what do you mean you want to go? Anyways, we proceeded to talk and got into, you know, a bunch of discussion. I wouldn't call myself like an atheist, but I was a pretty militant agnostic, right? I'd really Uh give Christians a run for their money. And and if anything, I'd pretty much ridicule. I mean, I got to a point where I was managing a few restaurants and um, I, uh, you know, took pride in seeing if I could make people, you know, cry. I mean, there were a couple of women that, you know, I would kind of come down so hard with some of the things they were doing. And I thought it was just so stupid. It's like, what do you mean you're going to wait until you have, you know, until you're married to have sex, you know, kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. I just was so foreign to my lifestyle. So I was pretty vicious with Christians. So I definitely was like the last person. But what happened was that night we got into a very long discussion and we got into eschatology and it really intrigued me because he was bringing up headlines. He was talking about different things that the Bible talks about and it was there and it just really intrigued me. It just kind of sucked me in. I was listening attentively about, you know, getting into revelation. And, it, you know, he was getting into like the mark and other things like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I remember it was probably about three hours into the conversation. We actually ended up talking that that whole night and we went for breakfast and then he ended up going to church and I just went to bed. But the thing <laughs> was that we got talking about a bunch of stuff. And I said to him at one point, I said, well, it's OK. You know, I'm, I'm all good. I believe, in, you know, I believe in God. He's like, it's not enough just to believe. Right. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, you have to have a relationship. And that was just foreign to me, right? Like, well, what do you mean, right? Yeah, yeah. So he proceeded to tell me what that kind of meant, the difference between just believing in God, uh, you know, because, again, I was getting kind of not scared, but I was kind of like, oh, it's okay, I- I'd be fine, I'm a good person kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. So anyways, I uh, I went to sleep that night. Next day, you know, I kind of just, did my own thing and I was out uh, Monday, Tuesday clubbing and stuff. Wednesday, I was sleeping over at my parents' place and uh, about, I don't know, it was about three in the morning or whatever, I woke up. And all I remember is there was like this presence around me. And I basically just lifted my hands and said, I'm coming to you. That's all I remember. I went back to sleep. Mm -hmm. The next morning I woke up and I was sitting there. I was on a couch and I looked on the shelf and there was all these VHS tapes. My, My parents had this old VHS player and all these VHS tapes. And they were all kind of, you know, all the spines were in there. One was glowing and it was Jesus. Wow. It was the film Jesus. It was actually glowing. It actually, it actually glowed with all, they had a whole row of all these like VHS tapes. I grabbed it. I just threw it in because we had been talking about Jesus. And for the first time, he explained things a little different than I knew about this babe in a manger, you know, the son of God. Mm-hmm. It became a little different for me. So I grabbed, I just, it was glowing. I, I went up almost robotic. I grabbed it, put it in the VCR. I sat down, glued, watched the entire Jesus film. And at the end, I got on my knees and I just gave my wow. life. I said, I just repent, you know, like, like I go, just take my life, uh, you know, because again, even after that discussion, when he had told me all that, I still went back to my ways. And it right. wasn't until something happened that evening when I woke up, don't even know what happened, but all of a sudden, you know, this VHS tape is glowing. <laughs> I grabbed it. So it was almost like, I'm going to, I'm going to help you along a little bit, brother. You know, right. I'm going to help right. you, son. I'm going to show you, you know, and then after that, but after that, I just, I broke down in tears. I was on my knees and I said, wow, what a wicked life I've lived, you know, mm-hmm. the pain. Yeah. And I remember right. when I got saved, I remember having to find a couple of these girls that I'd actually made cry. And I, I remember because I wanted to like, you know, uh, repent for it, uh, you make restitution, that type of thing. But I remember I ran into one and it was at a church I was at. 
And she said, it's okay. I was praying for you. <laughs> so it was pretty awesome. amazing how, awesome. how it all came around, but then finding out all these people that had been praying for me because, mm-hmm. you know, like you in the world, you know, being vicious, but I mean, I was into sex, drugs, rock and roll, but I yes. lived a wicked, sinful life. I mean, right. it, I would laugh at people that would even go to church. I mean, how stupid of a thing, but here's the interesting part about the whole thing. Why I moved away from church, because I, I grew up in a household where my parents weren't so much Christian, but they were religious in the sense that it's a good thing for the family to do. Right. Mm -hmm, So I was forced to go to church. But one thing was that when I got into sciences, I I became more ridiculed because, you know, it was even my father that I'd have talks with. I'd be at Sunday school and he'd be like, how do you fit all the animals in an ark? I mean, think about it logically. Right. What about climates? What about polar bears? Blah, blah. So it, it was eventually science that actually got me thinking that this is ridiculous, right? These are just mm-hmm. fables. These are fairy right, tales. Right, right. Yeah. But it was it was the whole scientism that got me to doubt it. But when I came around, when I got saved, and I started looking into the validity of the ark and seeing the construction and seeing how big it is and seeing all these things, everything fit together. And what, what's amazing then, and you brought this up before, is this investigation and exposing all the lies of evolution and Big Bang cosmology, it is time and time again proving that the Bible has been right all along. We just chose mm-hmm. to ignore it. Right. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing. And I think it's such an important thing for this generation, because uh, in my opinion, I do believe we are the fig tree generation and that we are near the end of days. That certainly with all the insanity that's going on, you know, like as in the days of Noah uh, with the GMO and all the craziness that's happening um, the weather manipulation, uh, the genetically modified food, the vaccines, that uh, unless the days be shortened, there should be no flesh left, in, in my opinion. And, so, um, and because of that, there's so many people that are hopeless, and there's so many people that have abandoned the churches and that have left because they're not receiving the truth. And then, in my opinion, many of these churches um, have been— Basically, they're involved in idolatry now. The mainstream churches have been taken over by the idolatry of scientism and the uh, the things that have been the counterfeit system, the cosmology, the calendar, all these different things, the fake um, holidays, the pagan holidays, the worship of you know things like Easter and Christmas and those kind of things. But anyways, um, all of this has gotten the mainstream church involved in idolatry and um, basically bound before these fake gods without ever realizing it. And now so many people are ripe to just bend the knee to the returning ancient aliens, you know, believing them to be um, the new age saviors of humanity and that they're coming to to redeem us. And so all of this is um, coming to light in this time now and so many of these kids that have been raised and educated in these uh darwinian as far as you know that we evolved in monkeys and and if that doesn't make sense to them then the whole thing that the ancient aliens seeded us a long time ago and then left well then that fills in that gap and that that makes complete sense to them and so that's their you know that's the neoteric theology that's the new aspect of you know as far as the astronomers being the the priests of Baal and so we're seeing all this coming to light and so many kids and teenagers being hopeless there's such a huge suicide rate such grand depression now and and they're looking to like go ahead Sorry, and that's what's intriguing. I mean, bringing up this topic, what I find really incredible is you would think they would go to all extensive, you know, work to actually, you know, fool us with transitional fossils, right? Mm, I mean, how hard would it be for the consensus to get together, do it, to pull it off? But here's here's the reason why they haven't done it is because they need the missing link because it's going to be fulfilled later. So I used to wonder, I'm like, wait a minute, why don't they just come up? I mean, yeah, we know of hoaxes like Lucy and Piltdown Man and stuff, but really on a whole concerted effort, could they not just really show, you know, 
thousands of transitional fossils of every type of species and just secure it. The reason is they're not is because they need it open. So the missing links that we all laugh at, we used to sit there and say, you got a bunch of missing links, you know, these are big problems in evolution, which while it's good, it was also part of their play is because right. they're just sitting back right. because the, the alien agenda will actually fill in the missing gaps. And I that is when it will become hundred percent secure. There is no debate. It is completely case closed. There is no debate. It's 100% confirmed. Here it is. So yeah, that's what I think this is why it's such a huge deception, why so many people can't wrap their head around it. I mean, I don't even sit there and say, I'm not even a smart guy, but what I'm saying is I rely on not my wisdom, but the most high in the sense that I basically say, listen, everything, I mean, I was even repenting for the fact that I was clinging to NASA and science, even though I was against evolution, I was still holding on to Big Bang cosmology, right? I was just attaching God to the bang, right? Like you say, nothing exploded. I say, God said, let, let there be light, you know? So right, I was right. just attaching him to that paradigm, which is very intriguing that so much of the church did that. And we just stopped there. And I think that was part of the plan as well, too, because it's not that they were trying to deceive anyone. They just wouldn't look into it further because they would just laugh it off and say, God created everything. Now let's move mm. on to this whole notion that we came from apes, right? right? So for me, it was the same way. I focused all my attention on you know evolution, while the fact was, well, where did evolution even come from? And when we follow it all back to the root of it all, the umbrella lie, which I say all the lies sit under, this is why this umbrella, the granddaddy lie of all lies, is what we're dealing with now. I do not think, you know, and I don't know anyone that could challenge me on that, that there would be any bigger lie than this, even hypothetically, if people right. are listening and they're not on board. Can you think of anything crazier than everything that you believed about your entire existence when it comes to the world, the sun, moon, and stars is a lie? There's nothing bigger. There's nothing right. bigger. So right. we're dealing with basically at this, and this is why the spiritual attack is happening. That's why this is going to be quite the process. And for me, with scientism exposed to, I wanted to have people, you know, continue on the journey because I eventually, you know, with the third installment in, in 2018, I want to get them to the grand. And lie. I want to get them, it's mm -hmm. just right in their face, but I didn't want to scare people off by saying the earth's flat. They're like, oh, it's a bunch of crazy flat earth, or, you know, I did mm -hmm. not, I mean, the first one doesn't even mention flat earth. There's not right. one person that mentions flat earth in the documentary. So it's been a great resource. So many people have told me that they've used it as a resource to reach people with right. the gospel, sure, but also to stop clinging on to scientism. You know, stick with science, great, but hey, you're going to find out that a lot of the stuff that you're holding on to is not scientific. So right. it's been a real incredible tool, and I believe that's why God called me to do it, is yes. that I would have something in place that would bring glory and honor to him, but it would be in a way that would basically allow people to go on that journey slowly, slowly, not too much in their, right in their face, just follow along on this installment this documentary series and by the third one if you've followed that far you're ready for you know you want to hear it all right, right but maybe someone right. gets to the first one so a lot of people are putting out documentaries and i've done it myself i have the global lie i put out impossible yes. these ones are right in your face but scientism exposed to was created more for a mainstream type audience uh main uh, a tool uh, uh evangelistic tool but also a tool to get into this topic when we're getting into flat earth and closed cosmology this is this is heavy duty stuff i mean even right. for me you know i i was willing to research anything or look into any kind of you know topic i laughed at this topic for you know a hold year. on brother I, I, yeah hold on we'll be right back everyone Hello, and we'll pick it up on the other side I hope you're well Back everybody for second hour. I'm your host Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed here on Truth Frequency Radio. I have a special guest with me this evening, Robbie Davidson of Celebrate Truth, who's also the host for the International Flat Earth Conference coming up here November 9th and 10th, of which so many people are looking forward to it, and I know myself that the three of the girls that work for me with Sacred Word Publishing are very excited for the conference and the gathering and looking forward to discourse, conversation with uh, others of like mind. Because um, this has been, as we were talking about in previous hour, a deeply profound truth, and one that um, when you understand that we've been lied to with regard to everything that we are taught uh, with, you know, the cosmology and how the system is set up and worked, how the earth is spinning once daily as it annually revolves around the sun, that all of that is a, a lie and it's a fabrication based upon um, 
something that was put forth and then never verified and has been challenged really by um, different individuals which are not mentioned, uh, the different scientific experiments that have come forth which have also verified the premise that the earth is not moving and that there's no measurable curvature those things are not spoken about and so these things are being kept in the dark in order to uh, fabricate the lie which they have built more and more upon uh, which continues even in this day with the whole ancient alien lie being uh, based upon the darwinian copernican system and so uh, I think you were wise, brother, to do as you did with regard to scientism exposed and piquing the interest of individuals and going gradually. Because as you said, it is a tool now uh, for people to open and to bring others that have been um, unwilling to examine or open themselves to new possibilities with regard to these kind of things, uh, bring them and pique their interest and open them to new possibility. And so um, it's, it's a really awesome thing because again, with regard to scientism and the Darwinian, Copernican, uh, heliocentric worldview, in my opinion, there's not been one larger lie which has led astray more people in this world and done more to separate people from the knowledge of their creator and from understanding that the Bible truly is the inerrant and inspired word of the Most High God than scientism. Um, your yeah, comment? yeah you're, you're right. And that's de- I would definitely echo that sentiment for sure. And that's why I thought it was so important to really get into this topic uh, put together, you know, documentary films based around this, because again, there is no other religion agenda deception that has basically, you know, had so many people walk away or basically destroy God in their mind and make right. it look foolish, ridiculous, make it laugh at the Bible, myself included. I mean, I basically walked away from any notion or just laughed at the idea of this stupid book that a bunch of people got together and wrote. And what did they know? They couldn't even get the, uh, you know, they couldn't get creation even right, you know? Right, they, right, I mean, yeah. So, so these are the type of things, right? So science has showed us, and again, part of that evolution lie is that we're so evolved in our intelligence. We can't depend on these guys in the past. They were stupid. But the evidence supports the fact that there was incredible intelligence in the past. We're actually getting stupider with all our technology. Right. We're actually not becoming smarter at all. You know, the technology is doing the work for us. We're actually becoming more dumb than ever before. That's a whole other discussion. But the yeah, fact was that there was very complex. There was complex life uh, in the past when it, it comes to the animal kingdom, when it comes mm-hmm. to people's intelligence. If anything, we're downgrading. We're not accelerating. Right. We're not actually evolving, you know, to the next level of godhood. And this is exactly where it is. You got the biological evolution, but you got the spiritual evolution. And it's all coming together under scientism. And scientism. You know, there's going to be some startling quotes even getting into uh, when you start getting into Big Bang and stuff, but it follows a lot of the Kabbalah, right? And again, there's a lot Mm -hmm. of spirituality that basically people are picking up on. Even scientists that are actually preaching a lot of this stuff are starting to go, wow, it's really intriguing how these guys, you know, got the whole Big Bang cosmology way back then. How'd they do that? You know? So again, this has been around for a long time. And instead of the high priests wearing robes, they're now wearing lab coats. Yes. Scientism uh-huh. is modern day magic. And that's what right. we're, we're seeing today. Nothing new happens under the sun, like Ecclesiastes, you know, tells us. And this is this is what is going on. So again, it's just different. It's more it has more prestige, it has recognition, but again, it is sinister just like it was in the past, and it's moving forward at a rapid pace. Pace, you know, dealing with uh, transhumanism, getting into the agendas going forward and what they want to do uh, for the coming battle, for the coming deception and the entry of the Antichrist. Yes, because absolutely, I agree with you. All that is tied to and um, built upon those things that we're talking about now. And so, um, can you talk a, a little bit about as far as your awakening to this, why you got involved? Uh, in making the videos and if you would a little bit about your background because um, you've had to have been doing this for a while because you're very well skilled uh, with creating videos and documentaries and so can you tell us a little bit about your past and what led you into uh, this line of work and where you gained your skill set 
No, I mean, I've dealt with like media and marketing and advertising. That would be kind of my business background. But mm-hmm. my hobby horse on the side was always, I was kind of an inspiring filmmaker. I was always getting my friends together and shooting, you know, different shorts and stuff. And I always was intrigued with behind the scenes, with movies and just the entire process. And again, I would watch documentaries as I got more into the true scene. And, you know, again, like uh, Gons and, uh, you know, Face Like the Sun and different things like this. And I was just like, wow, you know, one day it would be just really cool to to do that. Now, uh, for the longest time, I was very outspoken and passionate about many issues, you know, when it came to studying the world religions, the cults, getting into, you know, um, you know, Satanism, looking into spiritual warfare, eschatology, you know, and then looking at the world. And also, you know, when it comes to like 9-11 was a big one, you know, uh, for a a lot of people and, and understanding, you know, how sinister this world is and kind of what's going on. So I've always been outspoken, but I never really jumped on YouTube. I always thought, oh, one day, you know, I could do a rant here or there. Uh, but it wasn't until this topic that basically propelled me and said, it's time. And and two years ago, just over two years ago is when I first got on. But I came to this topic actually interesting enough from a video that was mocking it. I'm actually going to put it on my channel really soon because I think a lot of people will be intrigued to find out the video that got me, you know, mm-hmm. thinking and led me to understand, wow, uh, can you believe it that we've been lied to? And it was really a video uh, just basically looking at the literal interpretation of Genesis and certain verses in the Bible and just making fun of it, showing the fact that there's a firmament and that there was water above and below and kind of showing an illustration and making it look really silly. But then I'd be like, but that's what the Bible says. Uh-huh. Why, does, why does the Bible say that? Right. And I never right. looked at the firmament and the firmament for me was a really big one. Right. Uh-huh. So when I started actually constructing it in my mind, I was saying to myself, well, wait a minute, you know, Jesus says, you know, let the little children come to me, have faith like a child. Why would God want to deceive children? And if you were actually to read all these verses of creation to a child and say, draw what I'm telling you, what worldview would they, would they, you know, come up with? Right. And that's the reality that when you take the literal word of God, and I would say myself, I mean, I'm a literal six day creationist, I would say, right. Well, wait a minute. If I'm literal there, why I'm not literal over here? You know, a lot of people like right. to say, well, do you, do you say that, you know, it says Jesus is a door. Does he have hinges? And I'm like, whoa, 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 that's, that's a stupid argument. <laughs> I don't want to entertain it. But let's just, for, let's just rather than jump all over the place, let's stick with creation. Because I find it very interesting when people want to play the whole literal game, right? They're going to jump all over the place. Do we take everything literal? Just for mm-hmm. argument's sake, let's just focus on creation. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everything that is focused on creation, even if it's in Psalms and it's poetic, it still illustrates something happening. For example, if if I run like a gazelle, I'm doing something. I'm moving, right? So when mm-hmm. it says the sun, it, it, it runs its its course like a yes. you know, bridegroom. Right. So again, even even if you're going to – because some people say, what about Psalms? And I go, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give it to you just, just for, for sake. I'll give it to you as poetry. But that poetry is conveying something. It's conveying mm-hmm, movement, right? right? But yeah. let's go. Let's talk about Joshua. Would you say that that you know that happened? Well, yeah, that's right. historic. Okay, yeah, absolutely. What happened there, right? Well, they were ignorant, really, right? I've gone. It's gone so far with some ministries where they say that that God didn't want to offend other cultures. That's why <laughs> cosmology is not mentioned in the Bible. But anyways, I want to go back to how I came to it. So anyways, I started looking into it. It led me to watching videos, Mark sergeant I, I stumbled across flatter clues right because again they were making fun of it and at the end they said there's flat and i'm like flat earth you know and i laughed at a couple of things i'd seen videos probably six months prior a year before and off and on i'd be like what a bunch of morons anyone believes there's flat like you know what i mean we, we yes that a long time totally ago. Isaiah right. 40, I already proved that. Look, right there, Isaiah 40, 22, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a globe, right? But it led me to going, wait a minute, I'm going to look into this. So I just typed in, and, you know, once I got sucked in, I just, I had to learn everything. But I was like, what is going on? Like, if this is true, this is so monstrous. But everything in my spirit just felt right. I wanted to question things. I wanted to come at it from a scientific standpoint, spiritual standpoint, and also a conspiratorial standpoint in the sense that I want to connect the dots. And when I found out they were hiding certain things, like in Antarctica, things weren't adding up. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, it was all coming clear. And again, I always tell people this. What's really intriguing, hypothetically, just as an experiment, if you're listening, you think this is nuts. Try this. Try to take every creation verse literal. You know what? They don't contradict each other. They actually come together and form a perfect picture of something right. that basically all the cultures knew. So the fact is, yes. it's not like we're, we're off on a bunch of stuff where we can't figure out how that works. It all comes together. The firmament, the pillars, uh, just everything comes together. So I was like absolutely intrigued. So, I mean, after about a week, um, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to have to tell my wife. I think the earth is flat. You know, she's kind of like, you know. <laughs> so I, I went and told her. And honestly, Zen, she actually accepted it within like uh, 30 seconds. She said, mm. 
if the Bible says it, then it's true. And I was like, right, no, right. no, 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 no. It can't be that easy. You know what I mean? No, no, uh, yeah, the earth is flat, right? right? We're in a uh, dome, you know? I was freaking out, right? <laughs> but from that, I really went and investigated. I did a lot of research. And I'd say about three, about two months after that is when I put out my first video. And the first video I put out in August of 2015, um, after about three months, two, three months of investigating this, was on the stars. Because again, this whole, yes. you know, we come from stardust, then you got Alex de Crowley saying every woman and every man is a star. You know, you got this whole star angle and getting into the luminaries and stuff. And I was really intrigued. So my very first video I put out was just questioning, you know, uh, the stars and getting into it. And I started off with cosmology, dealing with the stuff that we're seeing in the sky. What if we've been lied to about that? And then quickly I started leading into the fact like, what if everything you've been taught about this earth? is wrong but the question is well why would they lie and i get this on a lot of interviews i did a mainstream interview for a radio station just a couple of weeks ago um for delaware 1059 and i mean there was caller after caller after caller asking questions but again it always leads back to well why would they lie you have to understand that satan is behind this whole thing and why he would lie is because he has plans to set himself up he needs a certain paradigm, a whole worldview set in place, and he needs to keep people away from God. And what better yes. way to do it is to 100% convince that we're just on a spinning ball flying through space with no purpose and we're just an accident. Right. Yeah, and that there's no really a uh, creator and no everything's just random and just came about, um, you know, just random circumstance just evolved of – uh, yeah, as far as evolution and also, yeah, they totally have the most of the world uh, deceived. You know, Revelation 12, um, they deceiveth most of the world, and and, and that is what really is uh, going on. And that's why I think uh, the important the work that you're doing and things that we've been writing about, the movies that you've been creating, are so very important, and they're going to be critical for so many people because really we are still the minority we're like probably less than one percent if there you know is more now i don't know exactly what it is i know yes there is a grand awakening and that many people are coming to this truth but still we are just a very small speck as far as the uh, with regard to those that are awakening compared to most that are still asleep and so uh, it's just going to be awesome as far as afterwards, because I know that this conference is going to – a lot of people are going to meet. There's going to be connections. There's going to be, as you said, all these different um, uh, newspapers and documentaries and all the people coming from all over the world that – there's going to be a lot of fruit bared from all of these efforts and all that you are um, doing. And that's what's and amazing, and that's what's amazing yeah. about this topic. And that's what's amazing about this topic is even if people aren't aware in researching it, they're all helping to discover the truth of the, the right. true creator of creation. And mm -hmm. what I find intriguing about this is there's never been a time before Zen where we came across people that were 100% convinced there's a creator but didn't really know who the creator was. These mm -hmm. people, you know, are not just going around and saying, well, I'm not even sure they're saying no 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 i was lied to i am special i was created unique there is a creator of this creator you know this creation um right. so we have the greatest opportunity in my mind in my like this is my opinion but we're we're moving into one of the greatest opportunities for evangelism and witnessing yes. that has ever happened especially in my lifetime i've i've witnessed to muslims or witches or atheists or agnostics and whatever but i've never run into people that are 100 percent convinced now that they've been lied to there is a creator they're just wanting to know who is that creator right yes, and here's right. this opportunity to really do it because again you don't have to convince them you know when it comes down to we've been lied to you don't have to go on that front saying you know your science teachers lied to you they're already like science lied so who are they falling on they're, they're not falling on anything else they want to know truth and they're doing it through the scientific method and what's the scientific method it's basically pointing back to what the Bible says, right? right? All the research on the firmament, wow, you know, the Bible says something about this thing, and there might be water up there. Well, what book right. says that there's water up there? It's the Bible, right? Yes. So it's almost like, and I say this to people all the time, it's like, you know, for a while everyone focused on evolution, but I think that basically when God starts revealing his true creation to people, who could stop that? Shills can't stop that. Satan can't stop that. Nobody can stop that, right? So well, mm -hmm. all they can do is convince you of lies, and that's what we're dealing with. It's like, I believe that God is allowing now the world to wake up and again, unfortunately, the Bible says that a lot of people still won't. Even right. when they know the 100% yes. truth, they still won't turn to him, which is sad. We need to keep them in prayer because there's power in prayer. 
But the yes. reality is that people are waking up to the true creation, just like it says in Romans. And it says one of the greatest ways that people know of the true creator, that know of God, is through his creation. And for so long, people have never really looked at creation because they've just relied on scientism to yes. tell them about creation. And this is what's so intriguing. It's so incredible how God can start waking people up that aren't even Christians. He can start waking people up. And, and all of a sudden start opening their eyes, and they're all fighting for him. They're fighting for the true created order. They're just not there yet when they come to a relationship, understanding that he basically is the one. And if they just surrender their life or whatever to him, you know, this will all come together. And again, everything in his timetable. And there's amazing stories, you know, like the a lot of people that I discuss with. I mean, a lot of people know that I'm an open Christian and stuff like that. But again, mm -hmm. it's intriguing having these discussions. And I mean, I know there's certain people that really, you know, aren't very public about it, but they're, they're listening, they're watching, they're reading mm -hmm. the Bible, you know, God's drawing them in because right. again, they're getting sucked in with the fact that, like there is a creator and this is the only logical one. Nothing else makes sense. I mean, you can't just create a brand new creator, you know, for these flat earthers because it has no history. You know, you're going to create mm -hmm. a brand new book, you know, like right, people are right. looking for proof and evidence. So that's what's so beautiful about the Bible. I mean, OD, ODD TV uh, did a did a podcast the other day and he was talking about the fact that he's not 100 percent there. He's really, really getting drawn towards it. But he uh -huh. says he says, I'm looking at the Bible. There's more manuscripts for that than any other book ever. Right. And I look around and no one's, you know, saying that I don't believe that you know, Julius Caesar or these literature, or these, you know, yes. uh, works didn't exist, but they attack the Bible. So he's getting very curious in the sense of saying, wait a minute, why do people why? have such a hate yes. on for the Bible? Why right. do people have such a hate on for this Jesus guy? I mean, uh -huh. a year ago he said, I thought Jesus was just a, a made up a nonsense right. fairy tale. Yes. But he's like, wait a minute. He's becoming more real to me. But I'll tell uh -huh. you one thing, when it comes to the point when he realizes that he is the true creator of creation, that all things right. were created by him and through him and nothing was created right. without him. Amen. I mean, it's going to blow his mind because, again, it's yes. not just some creator. It's now Jesus, basically, that came, became a man and died, you know, basically to provide yes. a way because we couldn't yeah. get there on our own. You know, we were we were we were sinful and there was nothing we could do in our works to earn our way to heaven. Right. And I mean, what a testimony of love. And if people really understand yes. the reality, some people look at it as barbaric and they look at it as sick, but they don't realize at the level of love. We'll never be able to comprehend that level of love. I remember I was in Bible college years ago when I first got saved. I mean, I was just on fire and I'm like, you know what? I'm going off to Bible college just to learn more. Right. I went off uh -huh. for a year, but I remember one night we were all sitting around talking and the one question which blew our minds was why does God love us so much? Yes. We just, yes. I mean, it rocked our mind because again, if I was a creator and I create a bunch of ants on a hill and I realize that if I go down there and I become an ant, they're going to gang up on me and beat <laughs> me up and kill me. I'm going to stomp on that anthill so fast. Right. And another ant, right. Right? right? I just stomp on him, but he didn't stomp on us. He yes. said, I'm going to go down and I'm going to get bludgeoned and I'm going to have them attack me and kill me so that I can provide a way so that they can come to me. I'm like, right. wow. I mean, you can't even make that up. It's so right. against anything that men could even create. Right. Like, oh, people made up the Bible. No, men would always put something and put them in a good light, right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible shows men in a very low light in the sense that they need a savior. They need yes. right. help. They cannot do it alone. And God right. said, hey, I'm here. Here's my hand. And do you want to reach out or not? And it's so, it's so, it's not like you need to go to church. You don't need to read the Bible 10 times a day. It's a relationship and you can do it right yes. now. You just talk right. to him and he knows yeah. what you're thinking. You know, mm -hmm. he knows people will say, well, what do I say? Talk to him. Just, you know, like you would. The whole idea is we've got into this whole relig religiosity where people think that, you know, to become, you know, uh, in a relationship, they have to start going to church. They got to do this. They got to do this. I tell people, mm -hmm. I say, go to God and say, God, I don't want to give this up, but change mm -hmm. me. If yes, you know, yes. if you believe it's wrong, change me because I can't change myself. Right, when you right. give God permission to change your life, wow, watch out. Yes, You're about right. to go on the Absolutely. wildest ride and the most amazing experience you've ever yeah. been on in your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, another thing, too, that we were talking about is the fact that this knowledge and this teaching and the fact that it, it's encoded in the scriptures and it's verified that the Bible is 100 percent prophetic and that one third of all scriptures that are still yet to be fulfilled are written for our generation. That even the book of Enoch, he, which also has this uh, cosmology encoded in it, as I've verified with uh, my ninth book, you know, the flat earth as key to decrypt the book of Enoch, um, it shows that. He, Enoch spoke about a remote, a distant generation, and that this is the generation he was writing for. 
and the cosmology set forth and as affirmed by the scriptures, by the Bible, it is all coming to light now. And so in my mind, this is all, again, verification as to that we are that generation. But the other beautiful thing is that uh, even militant atheists and agnostics, when they come to the truth of the cosmology, they they embrace not only is there a creator, uh, but that they were special, the earth is special, and that they are having to reassess whether the Bible uh, and the other aspects of it, if the cosmology is true, well, then everything else, you know, you have to reconsider everything else. And so that is bringing them to a uh, closer and deeper and more intimate relationship with the creator and with Christ and, uh, and all those things. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And there's no other knowledge or truth or conspiracy, uh, that one can study, which has done and impacted people in such profound manner as this. Yeah, absolutely. What a brilliant, what a brilliant, uh, deception to basically convince us that the earth is a planet like everything right. else we see up mm -hmm. in the sky. And again, I tell people I was at a conference recently and I spoke and I said, it really is one of the biggest deceptions. If you get your head around that, because so many people say, well, wait a minute, everything up there is round, but we have to be, you know, and the whole idea of being a sphere, everything in the sky is spheres. And regardless whether you agree with that or not, the reality is that the earth is created special. It's unique. It's different than anything that was put in the sky. Yeah. And again, if people will get their head around that as a Christian reading the Bible, if you go from that angle, you might start be able to see things a little bit different. But as long as you believe that basically we're on a planet, we're just a special planet and everything else is planets. God had to create, you know, m you know billions of other planets because, you know, he couldn't just have one. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. the idea that we're the same <laughs> as all these things we see in the sky is false. We are not a planet. And if you look at planet, it's a wandering star. So ask yourself right. the question, are we a star? Is Earth a star? No. But again, Satan wanted to deceive the world because he's all big on becoming, you know, the star, uh, saying we come from stardust, make the earth a wandering star, just like the planets, you know, and again, we're the not stars star. died for us. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They died so we could, you know, we right. could live and forget Jesus and, you know, right, just blasphemous right. statements like this. But yes. again, that's oh telling gosh. in the sense that there is something spiritual about it. And I think yes. when, when I bring this topic up, even with people in the community that really, you know, don't know where to look when it comes to the creator, I say, don't you find it interesting that these guys are attacking? the crucifixion they're attacking the gospel yes. they're cra they're attacking jesus they're not taking pot shots at buddha they're right, not taking right. pot shots at new age and yoga and all this they're going after one man they're going after one book don't you find that interesting and a lot of people said yeah that is kind of interesting you know because when you see these guys and they're trying to keep people away or trying to ridicule one thing maybe look at that thing a little bit more carefully and say wait a minute why are they so against this why are they so against this book? Why are they so against this man? And again, because it's not a man. It is God in flesh. It is something a lot bigger than what people realize. And that's the whole thing we're dealing with. We're dealing with an adversary that basically at all costs will want to diminish, will want to destroy, and will want to completely take people away from the idea that, you know, they were created special. And again, this is the deal. I mean, for the longest time, it was like, you know, have all different, you know, worship other gods, you know, bow to this, bow to this. But he moved in very slightly, you know, when it came to scientism in the sense where, all of a sudden it's like a Trojan horse where all of a sudden, like you mentioned before, you know, you know, you had raw, you have the Greeks, the Romans worshiping the sun, you have all this stuff. Mm -hmm. What are we doing now? I'm not saying that people are bowing down and worshiping the sun. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is, don't you find it fascinating that everything revolves around that sun again, right? Yes, the sun right. is the focal. It's the one that gives life. It's the one right. that gives the light. And again, you hear this echoed and you're kind of wait, wait a minute. Ecclesiastes says that nothing new happens under the sun. And while they were all giving tribute to the sun, what are we doing in modern day mainstream science? We are talking about everything we see in the sky. They're all suns. We're told that stars are even suns. Like we're talking a perversion and twisting of every single thing in the Bible imaginable. I thought, wait, maybe Satan will just take a break and he'll just twist a couple things. But no, Satan has to twist every single ounce of the Bible. He can't right. just be content by saying, I'm going to lie about the earth and that's it. Nope, I'm going to lie about the stars. I'm going to lie about planets. I'm going to lie about everything. And that's yes. what I find amazing about this is he wants to create his reality. He loves to imitate he loves to get the recognition, and rather than giving any tribute to God's true created order or creation, he wants to have homage to his creation. Yes.
Right. And he is just committed in his mind, it, like the whole idea of you know rising above the stars. This is what his pursuit, NASA and their idea of going to planet and, and the whole sci-fi narrative. This is born from Satan, and he is the only one in the Bible that wanted to be you know above the stars and ascend and fly around and stuff. And again, you have to ask yourself the question: Well, wait a minute. If he's Hold on, brother. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back, everyone, for final segment. All right, welcome back, everybody, for final segment. Uh, Robbie, if you would, give out all of your information once more where people can go find information about the International Flat Earth Conference, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in this particular segment. Sure, yeah, you can go to uh, learn all about the uh, Flat Earth International Conference 2017 at fe2017.com, as in Flat Earth. 2017.com so yeah just fe 2017.com you can see the people that are going to be featured the schedule uh there's a free app that you can download on your phone uh we've got lots of really exciting things happening there and yeah we can definitely talk about a lot of really amazing stuff going to happen and uh, we can talk about the speakers and just what we have planned for the two days uh at the conference uh, i've been working pretty hard with the venue with lighting companies production crews and looking to put on a, a pretty incredible event the world's watching we want to make sure that we really start to uh make a dent make a lot of people will start to think um and yeah people will always kind of ridicule it like i did and i expect that but when you start putting together, you know, things that are done professionally, like when I did with Scientism Exposed 2, I've had a lot of people reach out to me based on the fact that they really paid attention to it a lot more based on the production values. So I want to make sure that with the conference, it's done, it's done well. Uh, it's put together in a way that uh, people are really proud of. And it's a time that, you know, people really look forward to at least once a year that people can get together, the fellowship, the stories. And what I say for, uh, you know, a lot of people, they say it's not about the two days. It's about what happens afterwards. And right. I believe that it's going to it's going to basically uh, put things in a new light. The community is going to mature. A lot of stuff is going to happen, a lot of progress, people working together, even with differences. And I understand we all have our differences. We don't agree with one another. But one thing we do agree on is that we've been really lied to uh, with mainstream science. And we're all trying to get into the bottom of, you know, exposing the lies, but also, you know, discovering the, the true reality of uh, creation. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I do, like I said, I think this uh, will be a turning point. And a lot of people will realize that when they look back at all the documentaries that are going to come forth, the movies, all the people that are going to be live streaming, the interviews that are going to take place, there's just going to be a huge abundance, a wealth of information that pours forth following this conference and that this will be the hinge, the link uh, in looking back for a lot of people. Uh, they'll realize that for a lot of people, this will be a huge turning point in uh, helping others to come to the, the truth of this. And so if you would, yes, can you mention the, the speakers uh, when you're going to be releasing the, the Scientism Exposed 2, when that will be actually be playing? And also, if you'll speak about the live stream and how people can tune in and gain access to that as well. Sure. Yeah, I'll go over a bunch of information. I want to first uh, let everyone know that if uh, the conference was sold out, the good news was we kind of went and through the numbers. And a couple of days ago, we were able to release a few more tickets. So we released 40 tickets a couple of days ago. We're at 16 right now remaining. So if there's anyone listening that wants to go, you couldn't go before because it was sold out. We have 16 remaining tickets. This will be the last of the last. There is no more after this. We're, we're printing everything, uh, the signage. Everything is being done by next week. So there is 16 tickets remaining. You can get them if you go to fe2017.com. If you're not able to attend this year, also at fe2017.com, if you click on tickets, you will see the live streaming options. Now, I, I tell people this all the time. Uh, I have a four-man production crew coming in to do a really solid production. So the live stream is going to be an experience. It's basically going to be the next best thing. It's going to be a very enjoyable, uh, well-put-together uh, plan for the two days. So right now it's on the early bird price up until October 15th. So it's $17 for both days for the online stream. And after October 15th, it will go to $27. So it goes up $10 after October 15th. So if you want to jump on it, get your live stream tickets. It'll be for both days 
for the $17 right now for the early bird. And then after October 15th, it will go to $27. And like I said, it's going to be well worth it. Uh, kept the price low. It's going to be a very solid production. You're going to get uh, your definitely your money's worth on that, especially even just even with the ticket, the 16 remaining tickets that we were able to issue. Like I said, if you're on the fence, you're kind of thinking you want to go. I'm telling you over 500 people it is going to be a experience like you've never experienced in the fact of the friendships, the people, the community, just the excitement, the media. Uh, it's going to be basically history. And again, this is what's really exciting about this is we're making history at FEIC uh, this year and we'll be making more announcements uh, for the following years and going forward. But uh, I will be premiering Scientism Exposed 2 on the last night of the conference. So after the conference ends, it's Thursday and Friday. And after it ends in the afternoon, after dinner uh, and everything, when people come back, for the um, uh, the showing of Scientism Exposed 2. And then after that, we have the Flat Earth Video Awards uh, hosted by Mark and Mark uh, Sargent and Patricia Steer. So it's going to be a real great evening uh, that we have planned. But yeah, the premiere for Scientism Exposed 2 will be at the conference. Uh, if you're not able to get to the conference, we have the live stream for the premiere. So if you want to watch it live with everyone else, it's the worldwide premiere happening on November 10th. And you can get uh, $7, uh, and it's also on fe2017.com, or you can go to my website, celebratetruth.org, uh, and all the information is there. So I have all the links on YouTube and that sort of thing. So you'll be able to find it. But when it comes to the, um, the premiere, uh, it's going to be really exciting for me because, like I said, you're going to be able to get to see to the Zen. You're going to see Rob Skiba. You're going to see Aaron Judkins. You're going to see uh, Joe Taylor and uh, a few others. And like I said, it's going to be really exciting. I've never really done a premiere with this many people. And like I said, this is turning out to be very large. It's only going to grow bigger, but we want to do a solid uh, work on it this year. And we're excited for where it's going to head in the future. Um, have you considered uh, filming the premiere and releasing it as a documentary as well? I think that would be kind of cool to, you know, kind of a background on all of your work and your efforts with uh, the International Flat Earth Conference as well, that that would be something that people would be interested in seeing and, uh, you know, and supporting your work in that manner as well. Yeah, and I mean, well, the plan the plan that I have is I'm going to be releasing uh, a DVD for, of the conference uh, with a lot of additional footage. So, for example, mm -hmm. there'll be someone filming a lot of the stuff that happens in the evenings and other places that's not going to be part of the official stream. And I'm going to offer that as like a digital download or a DVD as, you know, people will have a memento. They want something, you know, as a souvenir, something like this. But there will be two documentary crews shooting at the conference. They have There's two uh, Flat Earth documentaries that are in production right now. So they'll be Capturing a lot of that type of stuff, but I'm looking to capture, you know, some of the stuff as well with the conference and then being able to offer that so that people kind of feel like they're a part of the experience if they weren't there. And if they were there, it's something they can kind of remember. They can take away and go, oh, I remember that and I remember and get other people on camera and talking and stuff. So we definitely plan on doing that. Like I said, as far as behind the scenes, I mean, for this year, probably not, but going forward, maybe we'll, we'll have room to do that. Maybe someone can follow me into next year because next year's event is going to be double the size and we're already basically uh securing everything now for next year but the announcement awesome. will be made shortly on, on next year's but i would say when we get there if someone can kind of look at maybe you know following me around or something on that i think it's a great idea it'd be awesome to have that documented but like i said i'm so busy right now with this just even Boy. going off the international conference and scientism exposed to at the same time my wife said maybe next year we shouldn't do both at the same time i'm like nah it's great. It's a rush, right? I like to work on <laughs> deadlines. I like to kind of put this together. I probably will do the filming a lot earlier next year than I did. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I said, this was God's timing, brother. It all worked out. And like I said, you yes. were a part of it, and it wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened any other way. And I'm I'm really happy for how it all came together and just the people that were part of it. And it is going to change lives. It's going to definitely be a instrumental film, and it's going to get a lot of people looking into. Well, this is the part two. Maybe I should look at the first one. And you know, yeah, so it's going to get a lot more buzz on that. And I think it's going to open a discussion for a lot of people i mean the responses the testimonies i get the emails i get uh people for the first time just in sincerely looking in to a lot of these deceptions but a ton of people saying you know what you know going out and buying a bible and saying you know what mm -hmm. i'm taking i'm taking this whole god thing real serious now you know yes, i'm taking amen. this whole you know bible serious again so again for me it's always important to come around focus on the gospel because really at the end of the day if we're we're not really focusing on that it's you know it's really pointless because you can right. realize all the lies of the world but if you don't fall if you don't get to the full truth the you truth, know that's yes. found in christ then you're lost 
you know, and yes, it's a sad amen. thing. It's a sad thing. So I just implore people, regardless, whether you take my words or not, at least take some time and look into it. Seek God, you know, draw close to God. He'll draw close to you, you know, and that's yes. the reality. A lot of people say, I don't yes. really feel God. I don't know where he is. Well, you know what? Have you even like draw to him, draw to him. He will draw to you. So that's the whole idea here. And it's just having these tools in place, and especially for people that have loved ones, people that there's people using scientism exposed so incredibly, like they're putting it into church libraries. They're putting it into, they're giving it out in schools. I mean, we have bulk orders, uh, you know, having it on like basically at cost so you can get multiple copies to people. But I'm telling you right now, this is an extraordinary tool. If you look at scientism exposed one, it is so incredibly subtle and it just gets people going, wait a minute. They said they went to the moon, you know, in the 60s, mm -hmm. and that's a quarter of a million miles away. And yet <laughs> since then, the furthest they've been is 400 miles. That's weird. I was talking mm -hmm. to a guy on the plane when I was filming. When I was actually coming down to Atlanta, I got talking to a guy on the plane because I was traveling, doing all this filming, and people would be like, hey, what do you do? Where are you going, right? I'm like, I'm shooting a documentary. And the minute you say you're shooting a documentary, they want to know. You know right. Right? What is it? Yeah. Yeah. So I say scientism. What's scientism? So we get in a big discussion. Well, on one, on one of the flights, it was a four-hour flight. I talked to the guy. And by hour three, I was right into flat earth and he was just like <laughs> right hundred percent there. You know, that doesn't uh -huh. happen all the time, but this guy right. was ready. I assessed it. Yeah. We started talking about the moon. We started talking about inconsistencies. And he's like, that is weird. Right. And right. instantly we started talking about these topics, but really when you start probing people with these questions and wait for a while to get to the heart yes. stuff saying, Hey dude, yes. did you know that uh, the globe's a lie? Like what, Where, what are you talking about? Start with basically, you know, the inconsistencies with NASA, start with the inconsistencies of, of uh, evolution, start with the inconsistencies of, and get them thinking. And then go, well, wait a minute, what's going on? And then kind of just track someone. Because I always say, like, on a conspiracy cycle, if someone's at JFK and they're still questioning the official story of JFK, but they're at, oh, yeah, 9 11, it happened exactly the way the mainstream media said right, it. They're not right. ready for the moon landing, didn't happen. They're not yes. ready for the earth is flat. Right. So kind of track with them. And I always say, if you're taking it from a conspiratorial type view, fine. If you're dealing with a literal biblical view, then start tracking with them. Say, hey, brother, no, 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 let's not go all over the place here. Let's stick with creation. Why are we taking these verses, you know, literal? But not these verses, right? And if you get to a scientific mind, someone that really, truly likes empirical science, then start really challenging on them. Say, don't you find it weird that there's no experiment to prove the spin of the earth? Well, what do you mean? Well, show me the experiment. It doesn't exist. Really? You'd think it would. And when they start thinking, they're like, that's weird. Really? All this time? You know, isn't it weird that we don't have a picture of the earth or we don't have a spinning, <laughs> you know, video of the earth? You know, it's 2017. Why don't we have a moon 20,000 satellites, right? Yeah, all these things, but, I, but I, this is when I'm talking to people on the plane or I'm doing things. I just subtly start saying, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? And, and, and the minute you start tracking, they go, that is kind of strange. But if they're like, no, it's not strange at all, then, you know, don't waste your time on them because right. we have this ur urgency that we think we have to we have to convert everyone we don't we don't we have to gauge people and see where they're at and again if god's drawing someone to you where they're kind of prepped they're ready they're like a sponge they're like tell me more brother you know yeah this is yes, an intriguing yes. conversation right. like the one night that my my friend you know started talking to me about eschatology and the bible and jesus i was drawn in i was that was at a point mm -hmm. before then nobody could talk to me about it but that night for whatever reason Maybe it was because of him. Maybe I had respect for him. Maybe it was, uh, I don't know the reason, but all I know is that was one night that I was like, tell me more, tell me more. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at that point he did tell me more. So rather than talking our ear off, you know, talking someone's ear off that doesn't want to hear, right. let's talk to the people that are like, wow, really? Yes. Is there any yes. materials you have? Do you have any documentaries? Is there a book I can read? You know, can you give me some resources? Can you give me some more video links? There are a lot of people hungry. That's one thing I'm realizing for all these naysayers and all these people that want to ridicule and laugh at us. Let's not worry about that. Let's worry about the people that are like, tell me, this is something that I've always been waiting for. You know, it's like my whole life. I've been waiting for someone to really break it down for me, you know, and make sense. And we can do that because again, by the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking through us, speaking truth into people, you know, he changes lives. We don't, right? We don't have, we don't, Absolutely. you know, we, we're yes. just a vessel. We're, we're just, we're used for his purpose. And what an amazing thing to be used for his purposes, to right. be used for his glory. Amen. And honestly, what an amazing thing to see people's lives changed for eternity. Yes. Uh, beautiful. Very wise words. And uh, I think you're absolutely correct. And this is something that I had to learn as well. And I think this is uh, the perfect way to not only r respond and interact with the public at large, but that with our loved ones, because, you know, sometimes with our loved ones, we become obsessed with trying to get them to know the truth and to hold important those things that are important in our lives. And yet 
if they're not willing to listen and they are just going to become um, uh, aggressive towards you and it's just going to cause division and they're not you know willing to hear anyways then you really you're wasting your time as you said you're just wasting your time and your effort you're just going to cause them to run away from you and to avoid you and to not want to speak with you anyways and so uh, you know don't throw pearls before swine that the bible is clear even i've been reading uh, lately um just proverbs and it's all about this you know about then speaking and those that are ready to listen that will actually hear that's when you plant the seeds and it will bear fruit but if you're throwing seed upon stony ground where it can't take root uh, it'll just wither you know when the sun comes out and so these are the kind of things that in the scriptures it's very clear to us that we should gauge as you said and 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 offer truth where truth will be uh, heard and where people will be receptive but a question from linda in the chat room she asked will the events be archived somehow for those of us who pay to watch online as far as the live stream um or are you know how how is that or do they have to watch the live stream live uh, no, that's in a order great to question. Catch no, that's a great question. No, we have a 48 hour replay on the live stream. So if you sign up for the live stream, you'll be able to catch it 48 hours after. So if you can't catch it the cool. day of or while it's going on, you'll have, you know, a couple of days after it to, you know, it will be saved for you to watch. So it's kind of like, you know, awesome. renting it. You'll be able to like do a replay um, of anything. So if you catch it, say on on Saturday or or you know sunday you'll, you'll still be able to watch it so yeah that's a great question the live stream's not just for you know that day and live it will also be held for 48 hours so there'll be an instant replay on it that you can you have access to for 48 hours after very cool very cool um and i know that you said there's going to be a dvd release um and can people go now and pre-order scientism exposed or yeah uh, yeah yeah absolutely okay. we have that we, we launched the pre-orders i put up the uh the trailer for scientism exposed Two. i think a week ago if you go Excellent. on my uh, my channel you'll see it uh really excited about that we're getting that up but yeah we have the pre-orders we opened the pre-orders and it's uh, five dollars off for the dvd and uh we're already yeah accepting the pre-orders for it but it will release november 20th so the premiere, if you want to catch it live, you know, for the worldwide premiere, that's kind of a live stream, you know, uh, 48 hour kind of replay on it. Uh, but uh, the actual official release of the DVD will be November 20th. So, uh, you know, it's up to you. But again, you can you can catch it on November 10th uh, at FEIC. Whether you're there in person, you'll definitely be able to see it. Uh, or if you want to order the live stream, it's seven dollars to uh, premiere the worldwide premiere of Scientism Exposed Two. And the pre-orders will be shipped out. You'll you'll get them. We'll be shipping out uh, November 20th. So you'll have awesome. them for the release awesome. date on November 20th. And once more, where can people go to sign up for the live stream again? If you want the live stream uh, for both the uh, conference or the Scientism Exposed to uh, premiere, it's at fe2017.com. Or if you want to just Google Flat Earth International Conference, you'll find it. Just type in Flat Earth International Conference in Google, and you'll find it. And uh, we'll have all we have all the links there and all the information. And uh, like I mentioned before, we have 16 tickets left. If it's your last chance and you really want to go and be part of history and meet with 500 other people, it's going to be it's going to be an amazing time. I'm really excited. Like I said, awesome. I'm, I'm most excited about just meeting people and talking and just hanging yes. out. And, and the sessions are going to be phenomenal. Everyone. Uh, and that's another thing I was going to mention too. everyone that's going to be there. Uh, we've got Rob Skiba. We got ODD TV, Patricia Steer, David Weiss, deep inside the rabbit hole. We got Bob Nodell from Globebusters, Jaron Campanella from Jaronism, Mark Sargent, uh, from you know he's on True Frequency as well with uh, Strange World. We got right. uh, Jonathan, and, and so is Jaron actually. But uh, we got right. Jonathan Christopoulos, the Morgal, uh, myself, Pastor Dean Odell. I got Richard Hopkins, Mr. Thrive and Survive, Emmanuel Lakonga, the Controversy Seven. He's also in Scientism Exposed Two. Uh, Carly Medrano, and we've got a new addition, Iru uh, Ledadisi from uh, Argentina, and he is going to be speaking on what the Spanish world, how the Spanish world. 
is waking up to the deceptions and he's has a radio show over there and he's going to enlighten us on a lot of amazing things. So really excited to bring him over uh, from Argentina. And I think he's going to wow a lot of people with just his expertise uh, when it comes to CGI, computer modeling, and just a lot of things that he's brought to the table. And he's becoming very large presence over, uh, you know, especially with the um, Spanish speaking uh, communities around mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about that. So we've got a full full schedule. We're going to be covering uh, topics with the Bible. We've got flat earth in the Bible. We've got uh, um, um, Pastor Dean Odell is going to be covering that. We've got NASA and space lies. Uh, we're going to go through flat earth 101 with ODD TV. Uh, we've got breaking down the heliocentric, uh, you know, scientific methods. Um, yeah, we've got some amazing stuff. Two full days, and like I said, we've got the evening entertainment happening on the last day with the premiere of Scientism Exposed 2 and then the Flat Earth Video Awards hosted by Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we had a chance to um, interview Iru with um, Steve Torrance and Mark Kevin, oh, Mike Kavanaugh. And, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it were, was, yeah, it was yeah, awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, those guys are awesome. And uh, yeah. we're actually yeah. going to be um, bringing them on with the you know discussion on their new model, which is fantastic Amazing. to research yeah, yeah yeah and i i hope to i've been talking and discussing with uh, with mike and stuff i'd love to be able to get him over for feic 18 mm-hmm. uh, i think they're doing extraordinary work the fe uh core group and uh right. yeah just brilliant stuff and just so happy to have them part of the community like i said it's amazing and it's time i always say to people when it comes to feic it's time that this happens so many people have been behind their computers and they've seen people on screens mm-hmm. and now people are all going to meet you know, converge uh, those two days and going forward from there, it, I think it's just going to develop long lasting uh, friendships. Uh, the community is going to mature. We're going to start, you know, really pushing this forward in a very organized, professional manner. And uh, I think it's time and uh, it's going to be an amazing uh, time. I'm really excited. Yeah, absolutely. Well, on behalf of the community, we thank you, brother, for all of your efforts and for organizing this and uh, bringing it to fruition and um, actually, you know, giving everybody a chance to congre- uh, congregate in this manner. It's going to most certainly be a fantastic thing and something that, you know, people will not forget. And, uh, you know, lifelong relationships are going to be began uh, because of this as well, but we've got just about uh, go, we've got three minutes remaining, and so I want to give you a chance for final comment and anything that you'd like to share with regard to your work. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it was unfortunate that you couldn't be part of it this year. We definitely want to have you for next year. So we'll uh, make sure that we can get arrangements and get it booked in nice and early for uh, next year. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll fill you in more on, um, you know, where the location will be and everything like that as we get closer to kind of securing all of that. But definitely looking forward to having you out for, for next year. It's going to be great that you're going to have a great presence there. Um, you know, with uh, your materials and your books, and you've done a phenomenal job, you know, basically the the hours that you spent, uh, you know, in your research and the books that you've written. I mean, we're very appreciative of what you've done. I mean, you spent a lot of of time and and effort really, you know, exposing these lies and basically being able to articulate it and put it into book form for so many people that, you know, really want to read, want to research and want to look at this in a serious manner. So, I mean, you know, big thanks to you, Zen. Like I said, it was amazing meeting up with you. Um, a lot of respect, you know, for, for what you do. And I, I'm definitely excited to, you know, get to know you more and spend time as we have opportunities to, to meet up like we did there, um, you know, a couple of months ago. And like I said, it was really extraordinary, like I said, how it all worked. I mean, I landed in Atlanta, threw out a, a, a message and said, hey, anyone in Atlanta want to meet up, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden someone just had a quest. Because I'm like, who, who, what flat earthers in Atlanta? I had no clue. And then all of a sudden mm. someone just put like uh, Zen Garcia question mark. Like they didn't even really know. They were just thinking maybe, right? Mm-hmm, and right. like I said, it was just really, it was really a nice, uh, it was a real bonus of the trip because again, it wasn't planned. And like I said, but God had it planned and, and I was really privileged to to be a part of it and be able to sit down and meet with you because like i said we've done about two or three shows now i think over the last couple of years mm-hmm, right. and uh, it was just nice to be, spend time in, in your home and uh get to know you more and uh it was uh, a real real honor and i'm uh, looking forward to definitely um having 
you know, basically Kathy and everyone there, you know, representing and having your materials there because I think mm-hmm. people can learn a lot from uh, the stuff that you've put together. So, you know, huge thanks to you. And I really appreciate your support being part of Scientism Exposed to. I really appreciate uh, everything that we talked about, the stuff that's going to be in there. And we covered a lot of topics. And I think that uh, there's some that, uh, I mean, you articulated in a way that I think it's going to really resonate very well with people and it's going to bring things into focus for a lot of people. Um, and yeah, it's going to be an incredible process. I'm just, um, I'm pleased and proud uh, that, uh, you know, this is all happening. And uh, yeah, I'm just honored that uh, God's choosing me to, to to lead and to do this. And uh, I just want to do I'm proud for sure. Yeah, and to facilitate all these. And most certainly uh, send all of our regards to your wife as well, because we know she's working just as hard as you from behind the scenes and organizing and pulling together all of these efforts and making it all happen and supporting you and your endeavors and your work. And, um, yeah, so yeah, again, thanks again, brother. And likewise, I appreciate, uh, you and all that you do. And I know the listening audience is grateful for all of your documentaries. And if you would, in the last 30 seconds, can you list the ones that you've created um, that people can find on your channel real quick? Sure, yeah. The the Global Lie, uh, Impossible, uh, Scientism Exposed, and then uh, coming up soon will be Scientism Exposed 2. Uh, just let everyone know, Scientism Exposed 2 will not be released on YouTube, so it will be available on DVD, digital download. We'll have those options, but again, I. Uh, did uh, an agreement with a distribution company so that this could go into uh, you know more people's hands and more people can see and come to this topic. So people, some people ask me, you know, why why aren't you offering it on YouTube? And I mean, I have a lot of things. I will continue to put a lot of things on YouTube. I will do documentaries. But with this, I just believe that this is going to go a lot bigger 